Head coach Terry Morin is here of Indiana. She has done the impossible. She has managed to put Lynn Dunn in an Indiana sweatshirt and a few other things as well this year. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallace to the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard McDonald, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. We have women's basketball coverage here Six days a week, Monday through Friday, on all things women's basketball. Saturday, about the WNBA draft. Very specifically, you can subscribe to us at YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also, of course, follow all the work we're doing over at thenexthoops.com, where we have over 100 reported pieces on women's basketball every single month, including a really important deep dive by our own Eric Reinston Lobel about the build of the Indiana program. And um, Coach, what you have done at Indiana, to me, is so significant in part because Indiana is central to your identity. And so I I just want to just start there. For somebody who grew up as a school star in Indiana, for somebody who, I mean, frankly, has run the gamut of colleges Mm -hmm. everywhere from Purdue, where you start, University of Indianapolis, to Indiana State, to come here and do it. How meaningful has it been to build the Hoosiers program for you personally? Well, it's it's very special, you know, growing up, as you mentioned, Howard, in, in southern Indiana and, and growing up watching Indiana men's basketball, uh, mm-hmm. you know, play on every Sunday uh, afternoon, you know, with my family. And um you know, this was the closest institution that I could cheer for. Um, and, um, you know, I, I uh, obviously uh, thought a lot of Coach Knight and what uh, he was, he, you know, how he coached and uh, the success and so forth. And so when you grow up in southern Indiana, you grow up an Indiana fan. And, um, you know, and so for, for me to be here now and, uh, you know, be um, – um, be able to be the head coach here uh, is is really special. But uh, what's more more special is you know how we've built this thing. Uh, I think you know I believe we've done it the right way. Uh, we're to a point now where we can uh, get the players that fit us, fit my staff, in uh, our personalities and our work ethic versus the ones we don't have to fit players. You know the some of the the most talented players out there. It takes a special. Um, player to come here and want to be a part of our program. And, um, you know, we don't sacrifice the character piece for the talent piece ever. Um, and, uh, we've managed to find some, um, you know, really good pieces that, uh, fit us. And, uh, right now they're, they're giving us quite a ride. I, I don't mean to insult the intelligence of my listeners by providing this background, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to give people the sense of the numbers of 26 and one, 26 and one, Playing in the Big Ten Conference, which is a point of personal privilege, I am absolutely convinced is the best conference in America, and doing it in a way that, like you said, you know, you're not sacrificing the people for the talent, and I, you know, we've I've gotten to cover so many members of your team through the years, and I can certainly attest to that as well. But you're also not sacrificing any parts of your game for any other parts of your game. And so, you know, the biggest thing for me is when I see you, you know, add a Sarah Scalia, it seems like it's not just, okay, here, we're adding a piece uh, to the roster. You're adding somebody who draws raves inside the locker room. And more to the point, you're adding somebody who adds another dimension to what you guys are doing. You know, for you guys to increase your percentage of points that you get from three, it was around 20% last year, which was fine. It was middle of the pack nationally. And your top 100 this year, north of 26%, it again seems like a very targeted, everything seems, and, and again, this came through Eric's piece as well, by design, by a plan, right? And so for you, as you kind of put this together, does this team feel like it's the most, um, let us say, um, consistent with the encore values that you have, leaving aside the encore values that have been a given throughout your time there? 
Yes, I, you know, you can't, uh, whether you're a, a fresh or a high schooler or whether you're a transfer that we have gotten out of the portal, been lucky enough. Uh, you can't come here with this, this idea that, um, you know, again, we, we pride ourselves in being different. And so if you don't, uh, you understand that it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. Uh, playing time for us is not promised. You earn that. Um, but we, we are intentional about what we need. And uh, that's how we've kind of built this. And I guess I don't want to take all the credit because I have a tremendous staff. Uh, Rhett's been with me. Weir's has been with me the, the entire time. Uh, Coach Fox has been with me seven out of my nine years here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a collective effort to um, look at our roster, look at our personnel, look what, what we're missing. And then at the end of every year, trying to figure out, okay, well, are, are there people perhaps that are in the portal that we can – uh, recruit and then you start recruiting them and then it's it, you know it's okay well this is who we are if you're interested in uh, you know Sarah Sarah Scotty is a kid that started every game at Minnesota you know and here she comes into Indiana yes she does start but then when we get Grace back we we bring her off the bench um, and you know as we said to all of them all of you are going to have to make sacrifices because we're deep we're talented uh, there's only 200 minutes in the game and so you know Everybody's night in and night out, not going to be, you know, um, satisfied with the minutes. Um, however, we, we can do this the right way. And if you guys will accept your roles and you'll make those sacrifices, we do believe that we could create something special here with this team. Um, and so we did. Uh, you, you hit it on the head. We had to get better from beyond the arc. Uh, we knew we had a, a special player in McKenzie Holmes. Uh, certainly we knew we had a special player in Grace, but it takes more than just two players. Uh, to do and, and achieve the goals that we want to achieve. Um, and by adding Sydney Parrish, by adding Sarah Scalia, by adding Yarden Garzon, who's a freshman from, you know, from Israel for us, you know, we've been able to really spread the floor now and become more difficult to guard. Um, that's also opened up things on the inside for McKenzie. Um, and so um, it was by design. You know, we, um, we just didn't try to go out and find uh, good basketball players. It was these are the players that fit our needs right now, and can they come in and surround themselves around two really good, you know, um, all American players and Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes. What's interesting about Mackenzie Holmes, obviously, her numbers have reached another level. You know, she was north of sixty percent each of her first three years from two point percentage. Um, she is north of seventy this year, and so. It sort of gets into what I'm curious about, how much of it is just the added space that you've created gravity on the court that has allowed her to have more space to operate. And you can see it when we watch a game in and game out. But is it also something beyond that? Is it that she's stronger? Is, it, is she more efficient in her moves uh, around the rim? You, you know, how do we kind of fully account for Mackenzie finding somehow another level here. sure uh, i think it's all of that i think mckenzie is healthy you know a year ago she wasn't healthy probably uh not only her but not being healthy but probably um you know we might have had a second championship you know because i think that we had the team last year that could have won a big 10 championship if uh, all of our pieces would have been healthy mac being the, the biggest one of all of them uh but she is healthier um and she's in great shape and she is confident um and um you know the floor spacers have helped her however she is still getting the doubles every night you know uh seeing the double coverage every single night uh and one of the things that we've been um you know really intentional about in practice is helping her grow her game and being now be, you have to become a facilitator um and um and so she every day you know it's it's drill work we put her in those scenarios where doubles are coming from the back side the top side and she has to read out of those double teams and she's just continued to improve and get better and um but um you know the other night against purdue i was happy uh, in the second half in particular i thought she went and got us two two pretty critical uh you know because purdue kept hanging around uh and there in the third i thought she went and got two pretty critical i thought um from my perspective offensive rebounds for us and so you know, i just think she um you know, again, I, I, I believe this. I think that she is in conversation as, for, you know, National Player of the Year. I use her numbers, you know, and, and people ask me all the time, well, her numbers or statistics are one thing, but 
you know, if you watch Mackenzie, you, 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 you can figure out quickly why she's different. You know, she's um, from her footwork to her hands, to her quick hips. Um, you know, she, she's a throwback and she is so uber talented. Uh, and, um, you know, I just, I wish we were, we would continue to get the national exposure on this, on this particular kid, because um, for her not to be in the conversation, um, you know, is, is, a, is a true disappointment, you know, for me, because, um, you know, we, of course, I'm biased, and I get that, but um, I think the proof is in the pudding and what she's been able to do for us. It is interesting, and, and I want to talk a little bit more about that, about it just feels like, and again, you're experiencing it, you know, from inside the program. I'm, I'm seeing it from over here on the East Coast. Like, there's a gap between what you guys have done so far and sort of the, the volume that comes along with it. So I, so I want to get into that. Uh, I, I do first uh, want to tell the folks at home uh, about prize picks. And so important that people know uh, that prize picks is an opportunity to pick two to six players. And if they go and score more or less than the prize picks projection, you can win 25 times your money. There's no competing against other people. It's just you against the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport you watch, and that means a lot to us here, obviously. NBA, yes, but also WNBA, men's college basketball, but women's college basketball, MLS, but also NWSL. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawal is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive an instant deposit match up to 100%, $100 or less, promo code locked on. So don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. So when we talk about McKenzie, when we talk about Indiana, again, the men's team has always gotten that attention. We've always seen that. And what you have built over this period of time, and, you know, we've had Grace on the program, we've had McKenzie on the program, but it doesn't necessarily seem like there's been the same kind of national breakthrough. Now, I don't know how we attribute that. You know, I don't know if it's a question of that the Big Ten network is separate from ESPN in some different ways. I don't know if it's a simple question of the megaphone is still getting larger. And so there's this idea that there can only be one. There can only be one national player of the year that the focus is on. There can only be one team that, you know, in the same way that we've heard that debate back and forth, oh, is UConn or South Carolina the standard bearer? As if you needed to choose where you don't need to choose the men's team, where Indiana and Kentucky and Kansas, you know, all of these programs are significant. And I just, I wonder just sort of a, you sort of take a step back and diagnose it in a bigger way. Where does that come from? Where is that gap? Why does it exist? What do you see? Well, unfortunately, I just think there's a bias, you know, that we talk about and, um, you know, and, and again, I don't want to take anything away from South Carolina and UConn and, you know, what they've been Stanford. And I mean, we have tremendous amount of respect for, for all of those. And as a, as a women's basketball, um, you know, past collegiate player, as a, as a coach, um, you know, I get it. I, I understand, every, you know, there's, there's talent there, but I also believe that there's talent elsewhere also. Uh, that um, gets left out of the conversation. And, um, and, and I will say this, I think every year is different, you know, from conference strength of a conference. Mm -hmm. um, this year I do. I'm, I, I believe that the Big Ten Women's Basketball Conference is the strongest across the board in, in the country. And you see that with, the, you know, the, 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 the 16 picks just a, a week ago or two weeks ago when you had five of those 16 were from the big, right? And, um, you know, I think that says a lot about the strength. We have an unbalanced schedule. We play a lot of, you know, our opponents twice. We'll play Ohio State twice. We play Iowa twice. You know, we – and so we're playing, um, you know, all these top we're, – we're beating up on each other night in and night out in the big. A lot of these other conferences don't do that. They may play, you know, a top team one time. 
uh, throughout their conference schedule. So I, I do think it's uh, cyclical. I do. I don't think that I can say that every year the big is the best uh, this year, but this year I do. I feel like um, what we've been able to accomplish as a conference um, should be a topic of conversation nationally because yeah. of uh, the, the Iowa's, the Ohio State's, the Indiana's, the Michigan's, the Maryland's. Um, you know, what we've been able to do, the, the crowds that we are we're getting night in and night out, the sellout crowds that we're playing in front of, that should be alone a conversation. Yeah. Um, and, and I get it. You know, South Carolina, you know, you know they, they sell out every night. Well, that's great. But, uh, you know, does, does every team in the SEC right now sell out the way the Big Ten has c- consistently? And I'm not saying we sell out every night, Howard, but I'm saying – you know, right now, this particular year, because of the talent in the in the conference, you know, there's a lot of fans coming out and they're watching Big Ten women's basketball. Um, and so I just I think that there's a bias. I think it's easy to say, you know, so and so, you know, yeah, we know that we know she's really good. We know this program is really good. But what about this program that maybe we don't talk about? Let's let's scratch the surface. Let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's do a little bit of extra work and uh, maybe maybe, uh, you know, talk about teams and players that haven't gotten the national attention. Uh, and that might pique other people's, you know, curiosity to say, oh, I want to sit down and I want to watch Indiana because I'm, I'm curious about this Mackenzie Holmes girl is, you know, she's, she's, you know, averaging this, she's rebound, you know, she's shooting 70%. Let's, 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 let's dig a little bit deeper and watch this kid. Um, and so that's what my charge or that's my challenge to, to others is like, you know, do the do the work as i tell our kids we got to do the work you know like let's let's uh let's let's dig a little bit deeper and and try to see uh, because i i have to believe and i know this there are some terrific teams and there are some terrific individual players out there that um you know are, are maybe getting talked about every now and again but certainly not as much as um you know i think that they they should i mean because we give a lot of love to the same players year in and year out. And I get it. They're superb, but I'm just a firm believer that there's other people out there, other players that deserve it, deserve that kind of recognition as well. No doubt about it. And, and you have one at point guard who I continue to believe is, uh, let us say, underrated by everyone from uh, national observers uh, to even some people you talk to across uh, WNBA front offices. Uh, in Grace Berger. Uh, and when we look at Grace, you know, the, the number one thing that I heard from talent evaluators heading into this season was um, they wanted to see her strength, her ability to finish at the rim, and her ability to uh, not just hit the three-point shot, but be a willing shooter. And so, uh, you know, I, I frankly, I, I watch your games pretty religiously because I, I, don't, I don't really understand um, anyone's life choices who isn't doing so. And so when you, when you think about it, right, like on a game-to-game basis, I'm watching her, and there was no hesitation when she's taking shots yeah. from beyond the arc. You're not necessarily seeing, like, oh, she's not getting 8, 10, 12, three-point attempts off right. per game. But she's when she's getting those opportunities, she's doing them without hesitation. I've talked to her about it. She's talked about it as something that she's worked on. From a coach's perspective, I'm just two parts, right? One is how that's made a difference in your overall scheme, specifically on spacing. And number two, just like the way in which you think that projects very well to the next level. Sure. Well, here, here's what I'll say without hesitation. She's a pro. And she's a pro uh, because she makes everybody else around her better. And she's a 5'11 guard who has exceptional ball skills, um, exceptional passing ability, um, exceptional mid-range. Can she finish at the rim? Yeah, always, uh, because she's she's you know has the strength to do that. Uh, has she worked like crazy on her outside shot, the three ball? No doubt. Has it become consistent? Yes. Is that something, you know, and I we've talked about it, it's something she has to hunt more inside of games because mm-hmm. that's what that's what the next level wants to see. Right. Um and, and she does, but she's not a kid that's gonna I'll say this, she's not a kid that's gonna sit out there and take a bad shot, all right, on our basketball team, knowing and believing and realizing that we can get a better shot. Right. Do you know what I mean? And so 
um, that's what makes her special because she could sit out there and air that thing out a lot more than she does. She just chooses not to because we always talk about where can we get not just a good shot, but can we get a great shot? And that's where our our, our uh, assists have been up, you know, the last, this year in particular, but the last couple of years because of our, the unselfishness of a Grace Berger, the unselfishness of a Chloe Moore McNeil that's going to, that's going to push that thing to the next best shot. And, um, and so, you know, you know, that, that's where, that's, that's who Grace is. She, and, and Grant, she's going to, um, you know, I'll argue, I'll argue with anybody that, that disputes whether or not she can play at the next level, because there's no, there's no question. And nobody's going to have a, a stronger work ethic uh, than Grace Berger. Nobody will outwork her. And um, if you ask her and tell her she needs to do this in order to, to achieve this and, you know, stay on this team, then she's going to, she's going to work like crazy because her work ethic is off the chart. Her ability, her IQ is off the chart when it comes to understanding the game um, and, and all of it. And so I know I'm her coach. I know I'm biased, but um, I think I can also, uh, she would be the first one to tell you that we've had multiple conversations on this is the stuff you got to get better at. Yeah. I mean, I mean, bottom line, if this first round comes and goes without Grace Berger getting picked, something has gone very wrong and yeah. it, it, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. I do want to talk about what that meant, what that's impacted for the team, because it's, it's had some overall significant numbers that I think speak well to your chances of being in Dallas. Uh, I do first want to tell the people at home about Bill Parr. And again, uh, you know, I don't just talk the talk. I walk the walk. If I'm watching Indiana basketball, I got a Bill Parr in my hands as I'm doing. When I'm going to cover women's basketball across the country, I'm grabbing them with me. Uh, because they have 100% real chocolate, but not all the fat and calories, only 130 calories, four grams of net sugar, and 17 grams of protein. You now don't have to just go to built.com to get them. You can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club, get a box of four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate or coconut puffs over at Walmart, or at Sam's Club, the 13 bar box of brownie batter and churro. Um, cannot recommend those highly enough. Um, that's all my wife, my children eat, um, you know, fruit, veggies, nah, no, just built bars. So make sure you go to built.com or go to these local stores and check them out. Built bar helps me get from one game to the next at a very busy time of year. And so the thing that, you know, you talked about Grace's unselfishness and her assist percentage at 31, you know, is really significant, but it's not singular on this team. You guys are sixth in the country in both total assist per game and assist to turnover ratio. So what does that mean? That means you're sharing the ball extremely well and you're making consistently good choices. And so when I sit down and, and I, I'm on record publicly about this to say, you know, look, seeding happens and everything happens, but there are not four better teams in the country than Indiana. There's no reason why the expectation should not be that you are there in the final four. And to me, it comes down to because you do everything well, because you are efficient around the rim, because you are efficient beyond the arc, because you share the ball incredibly well. And when you think about the team you are looking to create, we talked about it, you know, up top, but this is a team molded to the way in which you want to play. Does this feel to you like a team that is built to make that tournament run? There, there's no question. And, you know, um, the other thing we failed to uh, comment in, is about our defense, right? And, and uh, you know, just how well we've been able to perform on that side of the ball. Um, you know, the stinginess that we play with, the toughness, the grittiness. Um, you know, we're not a pressing team. We're not a zone team. Uh, we're blue collar, but we're going to – our rotations are going to be on point. Uh, we're very schemy, so every, every – uh, time we go into a game it's it's scouting report it's not we're not going to play the same way against opponent a and opponent b um it's trying to take away what other teams like to do and so as important as the offensive side is and i get it um and as efficient as we've been and i'm really proud of that um i'd be remiss if i didn't say but we we continue to win games because we've been really 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 good defensively I, I do just want to point out to that end, and you're absolutely right um, that it it needs to be mentioned. You guys are 28th in the country 
in defensive efficiency. So yeah, like right. it's a top five offense that we're talking about. But you know you, that that UNC game, I I think opened up a lot of eyes for you to play that North Carolina team and hold them to sixty three points. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't a slow paced game. You guys put up 87, you know, it, right. I feel like that really said something about another level defensively. Is there a yeah. difference this year that's taking this to even beyond where you were the last couple of years where you were a very strong defensive team? Right. And, and go back to that game too, Howard, that was with, without Grace Berger. Correct. Um, and so, um, but, but yeah, no, I think we've always tried to hang our hat, you know, you know, you, when you when you take over a program, you have to you have to sell your vision and, and your kids on what are what are we going to hang our hat on? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've and again, maybe this came from my my college coach and Linda, who really, um, you know, convinced us that in order to to win championships, you got to you got to you got to guard, you got to defend, you got to rebound. Um, and so I've kind of taken that every every place where we've been that we're going to be this hard-nosed gritty tough deep disciplined defensive uh team and that's what when people talk about indiana women's basketball it's going to be they're really good on the defensive side of the ball mm-hmm. um and um and now with you know what we've been able the pieces you know we've morphed into also an efficient offensive um you know team as well um but um you know it's it's always been who um uh, you know this, the, the identity piece has always been what I wanted us to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, because I do believe this, we saw it last night with Maryland and, and Iowa and Maryland was terrific defensively, but you're going to have nights where shots aren't going to fall. You know, McKenna Warnock, you know, some of those kids that normally knock down those shots, they weren't falling last night and they did a great job on Kate and they did a great job on, on Monica and they were willing to kind of roll the dice on those other kids. And if those shots fall, it's a different game, but last night they didn't. So, um, I go back to that, like, we're going to have nights where maybe as efficient as, you know, you and I are talking about, we are, maybe those shots don't fall, but how can we still stay in the game? How can we still win the game? Um, and I'm just a firm believer that you can still be in games, um, uh, because of your defense. And, um, that's, that's, that's kind of, you know, who we, what our identity is. You have done it all year again, to point out that when you're looking at how do you win, two games first weekend, two games second weekend, two games third weekend. That's often how it comes to pass, as you well know. And so it, it can be fascinating to see. I, uh, I, I, I'll I, be surprised not to see you joining us in Dallas. I appreciate it. Thank you, Howard. So the, the, the last thing before I let you go, if I can, is just, you know, for you to be building this right now, I joked at the top about seeing Lynn in that Indiana sweatshirt, <laughs> you know, the recent game. But to be doing it, at this moment and building in Indiana, the lights of which we've never seen. And you're doing it at the same moment that Lynn is building the Indiana fever. And I, I just wonder just what it means for you as, as, as part of a legacy to be part of that moment in time. No one should be able to take that away from either one of you right. to be able to do this at the college and the professional level at the same time. Um, just take me through what that's been like and what it means to see her at the sidelines and, you know, to have her as part of your life all these years later. Sure. Well, really cool moment. You know, I never thought I would see her in, a, in an Indiana uh, uh, sweatshirt, but uh, she joked with me and I said, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> uh, so um, she surprised me. She's She's been out to see us a couple of times. Um, and uh, it was obviously a, a nice, a sweet surprise from, from coach, but uh you know, she uh, she reminds me all the time about you know not not ever getting too high, not ever getting too low. Uh, but the other thing too is I think as I've aged and gotten older, uh, I've I've had more of these moments where I've I've I've, I've paused right and I've I've reflected uh, because I think as a young coach you're always you're always thinking about what's next right how and I'm chasing that next win I'm chasing that next recruit I'm chasing always it's like never getting off of a treadmill. And um, I, I feel like in part of this is coach, like just reminding me, like, you know, this, your, your first championship is the most, is the, is the most special one. So really relish it right now, you know, think about reflect on what, what you guys have been able to accomplish and be proud of that um, instead of, and I know you have a big game on Sunday, but just take a moment and make sure that you are celebrating your players, your staff, yourself, um, you know, what you've been able to accomplish. And so it's great that she's still close, right? She's still around close enough 
even if she wasn't, she'd still be watching and paying attention. But I love it that she's right up the road in Indianapolis, uh, that I get to see her more, uh, you know, in the next couple of years with, uh, you know, um, you know, she being at the, with the fever organization or back with the fever organization. And there's no question she might be, Howard, the smartest uh, person I've ever met. Um, she will get that thing right. Um, and, um, you know, I think Christy's going to do a great job. But uh, I know with, with Coach uh, helping and, in, in, um, you know, uh, managing that organization and getting the right pieces, um, you know, it's just a matter of time before we see the fever back in the hunt uh, for another mm -hmm. national championship so oh, or yeah. world championship. But, um yeah, you better get Quinn Dawn in apparel. That's your job. That's yeah. Your job. No, it's it's a treat to have her to have her so close again. So um, well, I'm I'm liking it. I'm loving it. I'm delighted to see what you both are building. Uh, obviously, this game coming up this weekend against Iowa is going to be fascinating to see. I expect another big crowd, not even just for Maryland, but a big crowd. Period. And so it will be wonderful entertainment. Uh, do not miss any opportunity. Uh, folks at home to go ahead and watch Indiana basketball. I want to thank you listeners for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen today. Make your second listen game to game NBA. Every moment, every performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Hey, NBA is fine. Once you've seen Indiana basketball, once there's no more women's basketball on, and then you have something to to watch. Yeah, sure. Check out the NBA at that point. So follow Game to Game, Locked on NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Um, Coach, thank you so much for You're your welcome. time. You're welcome. And listeners, we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, I am Howard Megdahl, wishing you all a wonderful Wednesday. Go to the win! You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball.